Bokyatov, Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment of our news. Uh, once again, we come to you, and this is really troubling me somewhat. Uh, the, the article that we received today, uh, we're actually subscribed to Breaking Israel News. It's the latest news in biblical perspective. The article is by Lee Spire. Uh, Lee, excuse me, Lee Spire. Very interesting article and very disheartening and very concerning at the same time. Uh, it says, leading evangelical organization calls on Christian Zionists to repent for supporting Israel. Uh, the, she writes in the article here, one of the world's leading Christian evangelical organizations is targeting Christian support for the state of Israel and what it calls a sinful practice. This was uh, first reported in Israel, Hayom, uh, and the uh, Lusan movement has de decried Christian Zionism in the past and its newest anti-Israel campaign is not new. For over 60 years, many evangelicals have clung to a very narrow theological narrative that weds Christian theology with the political ideology known as Zionism, wrote Steve Haas, vice president of the World Vision U.S. in the latest issue of Lausanne Global Analysis. Um, as a whole, the Lausanne movement has developed a negative obsession with Israel over the last several years. Senior leaders within Lausanne uh, uh, espouse the idea what Israel, the Jewish state, the chief persecutor of Christians and other peoples in the Middle East. One such example is the Cape Town Communities, published by Lausanne in Gathering in South Africa in 2010. The document calls on Christians to repent for their direct, listen to this now, for their direct role in Palestinian suffering by support, uh, supporting Israel. Now, let me remind you, as, we, as I'm sharing this article with you, we're almost at the end of the article, though, that Palestinians that live inside of Israel are, have every right as an Israeli. They get citizenship. They uh, participate in the parliament of Israel, in the Knesset. There are members who are Arab uh, uh, Arab Knesset members, and as well, the West Bank, the uh, so-called Palestinians that are there could also be participant in this. But what's ironic is they don't tell you that the, uh, the neighboring countries such as Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon, they do not want the Palestinian people in their land whatsoever. It has been a plot to keep them in Israel in order to take the Jewish state from the Jews and give it to the Vatican. It may sound far-fetched, but it's very true and very much real and realistic, and it is biblical as well. We're going to go into some of that in just a moment here. But uh, the, if, if the Palestinians of the West Bank and the, and the people of Gaza wanted to live in peace, Israel would have long ago accepted them, and they would have been just like the other 2 million Jews that are living in Israel, as it is, excuse me, 2 million uh, Arabs that are living in Israel today as citizens, enjoying the exact same rights and privileges and working side by side with Israelis. But that's not the goal nor the intention. In fact, those so-called Palestinians that are in Jordan and other countries are not citizens there either. They end up being put on refugee camps. So it's kind of ironic that the two-sided uh, bigotry of the, this evangelical movement that has published this article, and you're going to see, by the way, you're going to see more of this. It's, it's only a matter of time. Uh, John Hagee, when he joined with the Vatican, the Vatican's movement is against the Jews, clearly. So now John Hagee, though he has supported the Jews all along, will have to tailor everything he says according to what the Vatican says. Uh, we have many other ones that are doing the exact same thing in the evangelical movement. Kenneth Copeland, all of these uh, are, are really going down the wrong path. But anyway, let's move on with the article here. The movement equated Palestinian suffering at the hands of Israel with the suffering of the Jews during the Holocaust. That's funny. I myself was a victim of a suicide bomber uh, in northern Israel back in 2004. So I, I know exactly what the, the Palestinian people are doing and why they are doing it, and that is because Rome wants Israel. And their intent to get it one way or the other. If they can't get it politically, they're going to get it by force. One way or the other, they're going to get what they want. This is why you see that the Israeli government gave the upper room to the Catholic Church. They put a seat there, an honorary seat for the Pope of Rome to the, to, to the throne of King David, so to speak. 
Uh, and don't think that they don't just have control there. They also control King David's tomb below, as they proved by holding a... Um, they threw out the Jews that were in there praying, threw them out of the King David's tomb, and went in and held a mass inside of the tomb, showing their authority over Mount Zion. This is something that God is definitely not pleased with, and I wouldn't want to be on the wrong side with God. Um, Lusan rep uh, repeatedly makes mention of Christians suffering under radical Islamists, while Israel and international Zionists are slammed for what the movement believes is a tyrannical rule in the Middle East. Lusan is not, on, is not the only Christian organization that preaches against Israel. Recently, the Presbyterian Church USA voted a measure that called for removing the word Israel from its prayers. While the resolution was ultimately rejected, this, the sentiment behind the removal of any mention of Israel was not missed. An acute supporter of the boycott, divestment and sanction campaign, BDS, uh, has passed several anti-Israel measures and encourages its followers to stem, uh, excuse me, yeah, stem all support to the Israeli state. Um, and that was the conclusion of the article there. As I said, very disheartening to see that, but um, this is certainly biblical times. Also uh, in the news, let me just bring this up because this is all going to be part of our prophetic segment here. And many of you guys may already know this. The Jordanian pilot that was part of the bombing campaign against ISIS in Syria, he crashed, uh, he was captured by ISIS, and they burned him alive. The Jordanian uh, king has, has made an outcry uh, very strongly condemning ISIS for what they have done, and no doubt more retaliations will come as a result. I said to you the other day, that we are in the prophetic time clock of uh, Matthew uh, where Yeshua himself, Jesus, spoke about the things that would come to pass. And we are in the era of the nation rising against nation as we're seeing the European Union and Russia taking sides over Ukraine. And they're fighting. All of them are taking part in this. Now the United States willing to uh, give lethal weapons to, the, to Kiev to fight the, uh, the uh, independent uh, Russian pro-separatists that are in the, the, the south there that are fighting for their own rights uh, to the land that is also theirs and Russia supporting them on the opposite side. Russia calling for calm, America calling for arms. Uh, it's very, very hypocritical, none to say, but it is nation rising against nation. And now we see the kingdom against kingdom, Jordan against the ISIS group who is now controlling much of Syria. Uh, and it will continue on and on and on. So, but not only that, though, the, the scripture says in verse 24, verse 8, All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Um, and then, who's going to be hated of all nations? See, he's not just, this, by the way, this includes the true Christians that are standing with Israel, but he's talking to the Jewish people. You're going to be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And that's exactly what's happening. The true Christian that stands with Israel is going to be hated right along with the Jews themselves. Um, then he says, they sh uh, excuse me, and, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Exactly what we're seeing among the the evangelical movement that is against Israel. They're offended at Israel. Because why? Israel did not openly accept Yeshua as the Messiah when they first returned home, according to the biblical prophecy. But it comes in two phases. This is why we're going to dis discuss this in this political segment of Israel, Israeli News Live. Uh, so you understand the two times that Israel does a return uh, to the homeland. And the first one is going to be the house of Judah. But because they did not receive the gospel that the churches are perpetrating and the evangelical movement, now the evangelicals, and not all evangelicals, mind you, but many of them are turning against Israel, the state of Israel, because they didn't do what they thought was right. So we go on, it says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. That's exactly what's happening. They're out there prophesying of the evil and wickedness of Israel. This is what they're doing in these movements here. And they're deceiving many good Christians that have stood with Israel regardless. 
And by the way, we have on Facebook, we have a site called Unconditionally, We Stand With Israel. We encourage you to go and join that particular site. And some might say, well, I don't support the Zionist movement or the Rothschilds, etc. God brought this political group together and brought whatever elements it took to make Israel a nation so that when his, as his remnant comes home, there is a place to go. We're going to get into more of that in just a moment so you understand. But the thing is, is he took an evil and he brought good out of that evil in order to bring the Jewish people back to their homeland. We know that there's crooked politicians in Israel. No doubt, because why? They're siding with the Vatican. That tells you just how wicked and crooked they can get. But you have to remember, there is a remnant of Jews there that will end up believing that Yeshua is Messiah, but not because of the churches preaching their so-called doctrinal gospel. It's not the true gospel of Jesus Christ, the true gospel of the resurrection, although there are Christians that do believe and preach the very truth of the resurrection. But God needs the pureness of his word taught to Israel, not all the different doctrinal ideology, join the Baptist, join the Methodist, join the Presbyterian, join the Catholics, or whatever more. God wants a pure word for his people. And Yeshua clearly made that clear in Matthew 24 as well. We go on to see... And many, uh, excuse me, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. All of these things are beginning to be fulfilled, even as I'm speaking to you now. So, but, uh, but he that shall endure to the end, uh, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom, in Hebrew he actually said this gospel, this evangelii. In other words, the very thing that Yeshua was preaching when he was here will repeat again. See, when this evangelii shall be uh, shall be preached in all the world for a witness. There's your two witnesses. See, they, the, the, the reason it's a singular here uh, for a witness is because they will preach the exact same message. See? For a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Why is it being preached to all nations? Because all the nations have gathered against Israel. Okay, now... This actually brings up another interesting situation here. There are those people that believe. They say Steve teaches that the only way, uh, or excuse me, that there is more than one way of salvation, that there's one salvation for the Jews and there's another salvation for the Gentiles. That is completely false as false can get. You have to understand that only through the blood of Yeshua is there salvation. It's what I've always believed. It's what I've always taught. But clearly, uh, you must ask yourself this question here. Do you really honestly believe that every Jew that has been born since, the, since Israel was dispersed in 70 AD that did not recognize that Yeshua was indeed the Messiah, that they have all gone to hell because they did not openly confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is the Messiah? Now, if that's true then, then you would also have to accept the doctrine, which is another false doctrine, that every child that has died that was unable to confess with his or her mouth that died as a child also would go to hell, which is another false doctrine. Why? The blood of Jesus Christ atones for a child that cannot atone for himself, as well as the blood of Jesus Christ out of his own mouth atoned for Israel. He said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. And Paul even teaches in Romans 11 that there is a remnant even until this day. I don't say that everyone that claims to be Jewish is going to be saved. That is true. But the thing is, is God knows that there is a Jew that would believe if his eyes were open. And the Bible clearly says they were blinded for your sake. For the Gentile's sake, I say your sake because there is so many good, godly Christian people that stand with us here. And remember, I'm only one part of the body. God called me to deal with my own people. But yet, I have many Gentile friends that are being blessed by these messages that I bring to you. And I thank God for you. And I love you with all of my heart. And don't think that when I say the Christian Bible and the Jewish Bible that I belittle the, the, the Christian New Testament. I normally don't use the word New Testament. Why don't I use the word New Testament? Because Paul said, I became all things to all men, saving that I might win some. 
And the thing is, if I say New Testament, what happens? The Jewish people, and many of them listen to these videos. Many of them listen to this broadcast. Many of them listen to the Danun Institute of Biblical Research broadcast. But they would inadvertently assume that I make the, 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 the Jewish Bible, what, we, what is called by the Old Testament, they would think that, it, that I've done away with this. And it's not true. It's one completed book of God. All of it from cover to cover as a Christian has in his possession is God's word. And I do not exalt one higher than the other. And in both of them, people say, well, you say that there's mistakes in the King James Version. There's mistakes translated in the English of the Old Testament as well. There's things that the Jews intentionally took out as well after Yeshua came because they didn't want you to know some of the things that were written that they found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Specifically, one particular passage that I've read myself, the very fragment itself I've read, where it actually said that David, there would always be a man on David's throne. Think about this, my Jewish brethren. There would always be a man on David's throne until Mashiach comes. In 70 AD, we were dispersed as a nation and there was no longer, quote unquote, a man on the throne. But you took out that last half of that verse. Why? Because you didn't want the people to know that the Messiah had come. Now, there are those that will be judged, no doubt, for what was done to Yeshua. But you have to remember, if Yeshua pardoned them and asked God himself, forgive them, Father, they don't know what they are doing, then are they forgiven or are they not forgiven? You have to argue it with him. When they said, let his blood be upon us and upon our children, they meant it for evil, just as Joseph's brothers meant it for evil when they sold him out to the Ishmaelites and they took him down, the Ishmaelites uh, sold him to the Egyptians. It was done to save life according to the word of God. And what the Jews did was for the Gentile sake, for the people of the nations, they sold out Christ. The whole thing, God chose Israel as a nation, not because we were better than anybody else, but because Abraham was willing to offer up his only son. And God sent his only son and Israel was willing to offer him up blind as, as they were. Abraham was blind. He had no idea why God asked him to do that. But nonetheless, God accounted it to him for righteousness that he was willing to do it. At Rephidim, when Moses, when they, when they traveled from sin, the, the wilderness of sin to Rephidim, God had commanded them to move and there was no water there. And so they were very bitter and hated Moses for it. Aaron joined in with the group that hated Moses for it. He said, would we to God that we'd have died in Egypt instead of dying of thirst, us and our cattle and everything dying of thirst. But why did God bring them there? God brought them there to thirst for a reason. Because he wanted to show them that the rock, and that rock according to Paul was Christ. Notice he didn't say Christ Jesus, he said Christ the anointed one. It's written in the Torah. That was yod heh vav -He Hashem. That rock was Hashem. Goes into a lot of other doctrinal issues that I'm accused of. People say, oh, Steve doesn't believe in the Trinity. I don't believe in a, 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 in the ideology that there's three separate gods and that you got to go pray to three different gods. No, I don't believe in that. God manifested himself. He, he took, there is God, there is a Father, there is Almighty God himself. But what you fail to realize is when he brought that Logos into being in Genesis, that Logos, that was God manifesting himself to the world. And it came down through time and then finally into a human body for redemption. I'm going to go into that right now. All right, now. When... When, they took, when he took, they, he said, God said to him, take the elders of Israel and go out and smite the rock that it bring forth this water. Now, we're not talking about 38 years later in the wilderness journey where God said to speak to the rock. The first time, God tells him to go out and smite the rock that it bring forth its waters. Because the argument was there, they were, they, they were questioning whether or not God was even among them or not. 
And when they went out there, they smote the rock and the water came forth. That was showing that the elders of Israel, the, the, the Levites of Israel, were going to smite Yeshua when he came. That they would have to smite him to bring forth the waters of life. It was a call. It was foreshadowing what would happen in order to do what? To restore back that life. You talk about being born again. What is being born again in the first place? It's the fact that you are born of a carnal flesh body. Adam and Eve forfeited the fact for you to have eternal life. They forfeited in the Garden of Eden and God then guarded the tree of life and you were no longer allowed access to the tree of life, which it was, that tree of life was Christ. He was an olive tree. He is the vine. You are the branches. He's the one that breathes life into you. The very divine name of God is actually the essence of breath, of breathing life. That's why they were called Ish and Isha. The, uh, the Aleph Yod Sheen is how you spell Ish, which is God's divine name combined with the word fire. They were filled with the spirit of Almighty God. Not, uh, people say in King James, they translate that Holy Ghost. It's not, in, it's not ghost, it's spirit. Oh, gosh. No wonder why Yeshua says that there has to be an evangeli, there has to be a gospel that will be preached as a witness, not this, all these different doctrinal opinions. I mean, honestly, be honest with yourself. Do you really think Israel is going to believe what this church has, says this is right, this one says this is right, this one says this is right, oh, this one says no, this is right over here, and they're wrong, and they're wrong, and they're wrong. Really, do, they, do you expect them to believe under these conditions? No. And not only that, he said, it's going to be preached to all nations for a witness. Because all the nations just don't get it. And that's Moses and Elijah. It's not, it's not Elijah and Enoch. That completely contrary to the word of God. Mm. Unreal. Anyway. So when Christ was smitten... The water came from his side as a sign that the life that was in God, or the life that was, excuse me, that was in Christ, the Holy Spirit that was meant for you, was now released. Israel had to be blind. Do you think the Jewish people would have crucified their Messiah had they known it was him? But see, the thing is, is Daniel said that he would be cut off, not for himself. He was cut off for the world. Abraham was a father of many nations. That was my Christian friends. You are the nations that are included in that. He is your father. Abraham is your father. What? The father of faith for you. And you believe because of that. And then instead of you standing with your Jewish brethren, now there's many, many so-called Christians that are turning against them, failing to recognize that they were blinded for your own sake. Let me take you to Romans real quick. I mean, this is, this, this is so terrible that people miss this completely. Paul says here, And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be graft in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? See, for I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of Gentiles be come in. You see, God would not even allow them to come in except for a few here and there, like myself. As a nation as a whole, the way He deals with Israel, He doesn't allow us to come in yet until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Until He is done dealing with you guys. That's the same thing with the story of Joseph. What did Joseph do? Joseph fed the entire Gentile world. Then his brethren come down. And it's interesting how that happens too if you think about it. When Joseph first was a dreamer and, and saw visions and, and testified of that, they hated him, they rejected him. When Israel, when they first received the Messiah, Yeshua, and, and he came and he had all these great miracles and wonders, Israel rejected him. 
And then they come, when, when all this is over, they, they come down to, they, you know, Joseph is exalted up. Joseph has fed the entire world. He put the food aside. He fed the nations. He was the savior to the nations of the world. And then finally, here comes Israel back down. A type of Israel returning to their homeland. And we know Egypt is not the homeland, but the thing is they, they come down and they receive the good of the Gentile, of, of the hand of their own brother, and it was the Gentiles that labored to keep them alive. It was the labors of the Gentiles. It's just like in this ministry. This ministry is a Jewish ministry to the Jewish people, but it is the love of the Gentile people that support this ministry. You are like it was with Joseph. You support, you stand with us, because why? You believe that God is going to save them. You're fulfilling biblical prophecy. And the thing is, is they come down, they don't even recognize him when they come down the first time, they're there in his presence. And he doesn't make himself known to them either, does he? And at this time, the nations have already ate, they've already received the gospel. That's what the food represents, it represents the meat of the gospel, the bread of life. But they go back. When they come again, when they bring Benjamin, when they bring Benjamin, Benjamin is a type of the completing of the tribes coming home, then their eyes come open to who he is. Then they re weep and mourn. Ben actually, Benjamin, ben sorry, Benjamin types the house of Judah because remember, it was Shimei that condemned David. David is a type of Christ. He condemned David and he spit on him and he called him all kinds of names and cursed him. But when David come back, before David would cross the river, he said to the two, there were two witnesses then too, the two priests. He said, get them in one mind and one accord. Then I'll come. And when David started to come across that river, the first man to meet him was Shimei, repenting, forgive me, I did not know. Oh, you know what? David's men who represent the true Christian that has stayed with Yeshua down through the ages, they wanted to kill Shimei. David said, no man will die today because he's merciful. Remember God said when their iniquity comes to an end, but anyway, finishing what he says right here, and, and, and he says, uh, they have slumber eyes that they should not see. And, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, Blindness is in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of Gentiles be come in. And so, shall, so all Israel shall be saved. It is written, there shall come out of Zion, the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. Imagine that. For your sakes. For the gift and calling of God are without repentance. For as you times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. And you think that really, you really believe that God is going to send them all to hell because they didn't die. His blood was shed for them. They said, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. What they meant for evil, just like Joseph's brothers, they took and they killed the goat. They sprinkled the goat on his coat, go back, show it to their father and said, tell us, is this your son's coat or not? And he wept and mourned and cried in bitterness for, for Joseph. And the Jews did the same thing. And what they meant for evil, God took that goat and, 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 and it was for salvation, for their salvation. Now, let me quickly take you in this prophetic segment. Let me really quickly take you. I want to share with you some very important scriptures that you must know because I want you to understand what God has done. In Jeremiah chapter, excuse me, in Jeremiah 30, verse 1 through 4, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, 
The days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah. That's the house of Israel and the house of Judah. God has swore that they would come home. Now you have to remember the house of Israel was, was, had been in dispersion for a long time by the time, about 200 years when this was actually spoken by Jeremiah. They never came home when the house of Judah was there. When they, the house of Judah returned, and they once again reigned until the coming of the Messiah. But the house of Israel didn't. So there's a promise that they do return, all right? All right, so let's go on. Let's go to, uh, I wrote down some scriptures I wanted to share with you. Let's go to um, Ezekiel 36, excuse me, Ezekiel 30, um, Add another one here in Ezekiel. Ah. Ezekiel 35 and 36. 36 is the main one here. Uh, uh, chapter 36, verse 5. Therefore, uh, let me go up to verse 4. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills and to the rivers and to the valleys and to the desolate waste and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and a derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. And against all of Edomia, which have appointed my land unto their possession with joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast out for a prey. Remember when I did the message not long ago and I said Israel has been officially divided? Well, it's going to get divided again even yet. When they gave up, when the Jewish people gave Rome Mount Zion, that is a fulfillment right here. Edomia. Now, it's not just, he doesn't just blame the Edomites for doing this. He says, the residue of the heathen against all of Edomia. Surely in my fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen or the nations and against all the, uh, uh, of Edomia which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. And of course if you go to Ezekiel 35 clearly it shows that they divided the land and they give the Palestinians part as well in order to justify their reasonings to come in there and to do, to do just this. Um. And by the way, if you don't believe that that, that happens, that, uh, that the Edomia is Rome, remember Psalm 83, the tents of Esau, or Edom, are confederate. See, the tents, that's the churches, are confederate with Edom. Edom is Rome. How do we know that? Obadiah, verse 10, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that thou the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast one of them. Who was one of them? Adam. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother and the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of their distress. So it's clearly the house of Judah, not the house of Israel. And he says that Edom is the one that did this here. All right. Now, in fact, if you want to know that, it says uh, verse, verse 8 is where it's at. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O Timon, shall be dismayed, and the end of every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. And, and then he goes into the accusing them of what they did. Clearly it is 70 A.D. when Israel was destroyed at that time, uh, when the house of Judah goes into captivity. God clearly, because and, and, and how we know that it's Rome, is because it was uh, uh, Titus, the Roman general, that was the one that took part in all of that. Is that not true? Sure it's true. All right, now also, I want to take you to, uh, uh, th uh, uh, back to Jeremiah 36, 22. Let's, let's drop back real quick because that's important as well. Jeremiah 36, 22. Many scriptures I'm, I'm, I'm bypassing. Ezekiel 36 uh, is extremely important that you were to know this one as well. Um, 
I'm sorry, that's, that is Ezekiel. I'm sorry, I, I believe that is Ezekiel that I meant to go to. Ezekiel 36. Yes, Ezekiel 36. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Edomia, which have appointed my land into the, their possession. So now you know who Edomia is. It is the Romans, clearly identified in Scripture. Going over to Micah. Uh, chapter 4, again, In that day saith the Lord, will I assemble uh, her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. And I will make her that halteth a remnant, and her that was cast out far off a strong nation, and the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forevermore. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, and to thee shall it come, even in the first dominion, the king shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. And now why dost thou cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished? For pains have taken thee as a woman in travail. Be in pain. Now see, God brings back home the house of Judah, the house of Israel, and now they're in pain because all the nations come against them. That's what Micah 4 brings out. And of course, Zechariah 12. How could we miss Zechariah 12? Notice verse 3. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people that burden themselves with, with it shall be cut in pieces though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Notice God doesn't speak about nations now. He speaks about you as an individual. Why would you want to be against what God has brought back? Don't be deceived by all these false prophets Yeshua warned you, Jesus himself warned you that there would be many false prophets that would cause many to turn away from the truth. You wouldn't stand with your own people. You wouldn't stand with the very Jews that were brought back as a remnant. And he says here in verse 10, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. See, they're not, they, they weren't meant to come back. and you know, the, the Christian is not the one that is pierced. They're meant to recognize him when he reveals himself to Israel. My friends, please, stop standing with this false doctrines and false prophecies. His blood atoned. If you believe that the blood of Christ atones for a child that cannot atone for himself, and yet he's never confessed that Jesus Christ is his Savior, cannot the blood of Jesus Christ also atone for the Jew that would believe if his eyes were opened and could see? But the Bible says they were blinded for your sakes. He made them enemies of the gospel for your sake. The same thing with Joseph. Joseph had to become an enemy so that he could save a world. I don't know why God does it this way. That's his business, but he's the potter. We're the clay. I want to be molded for honor, not dishonor. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for your support. And we still encourage, there's a lot of needs that, 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 that there is here with Israeli News Live as well as with Israel Returns and an Institute of Biblical Research. We need your support. We thank you for it. And thank you for standing with Israel. We see your love for the Jewish people. God bless you.